Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, I could name many more, and most recently, Jacob Blake. This has been happening too much, and I, I'm just going to today release some information on the Jacob Blake case. Jacob Blake is a, of course, a fairly young black man, um, lived in Wisconsin, a pretty, uh, pretty decent community from the looks of the little video, but anyhow, inside of the case, yesterday I hear, I hear all of this happening, I hear the NBA boycotting, I hear the MLB boycotting, I hear the NFL boycotting, and I'm like, oh, this must have been very, very terrible, so I go look at the video and see something that that I'm pretty sure a lot of people won't be able to unsee for a really long time. The people, not just the people that are in that video, but the people that watch that video. Um, as of right now, Jacob Blake is in pretty stable condition. He is paralyzed from the neck down. So that that's one thing, but Jacob Blake is alive. He did survive the incident where he got shot seven times in the back. But anyways, just a little status report on him. That's all that was some information but before this video gets started i would like to remind you to subscribe like and follow me on instagram at real micah cannon i'm trying to get to 1k subscribers by the end of september yes it is a bit lofty but we don't care around here we aim high dream big around here and that's all i'm gonna do now back to the video all right anyways jacob blake you know young black man um he he was, he had the cops called on him, on him strictly, has his two kids in the back of his car, his wife, um, in the passenger seat who had soon gotten out of the car to help maybe calm down the situation, but obviously that didn't work. So as you can tell from the video, which I'm not going to play because of different reasons, maybe some people find it disturbing. I, I don't know. I don't want to see the video. I don't want anybody else to see the video. Just look it up on YouTube. Just look up Jacob Blake killing and I promise you that'll be the first thing to come up. But anyhow, Jacob Blake, all I saw was the dude was out of his car. There were, I believe, two to three cops out there and one was particularly aggressive. Jacob Blake then seemingly to decide, okay, this is disrespect. Y'all not getting anywhere acting like this with me. I'm going to walk back to my vehicle. In the midst of walking back to his vehicle, the cop pulls out his pistol. Um, Jacob Blake obviously doesn't see it. Dude is just going into his car. You can tell he's pretty mad about it. You can tell he hates racist America. He knows the cop is racist. He knows the cop has no good intentions for him. So the dude's trying to go back in his car. Now keep in mind, his wife's on the other side and his children are in the back of the car, right? Opens his door, goes in the car, attempts to go in the car. The cop shoots him seven times in the back. Seven times. He is given immediate emergency medical services and rushed to the hospital where he nearly died, but he is, he's in stable condition right now. Dude's doing really well. And that's really a blessing. Um, he is paralyzed, but we, we're just, I'm just glad to hear that the man is alive. He could, he could really easily have died, but the dude is still alive. The, the thing I want to point out is the situation. I hear a lot of things going out. I hear that the guy reportedly had a knife in his car. I hear that the guy had maybe somewhat of a criminal record. I hear that he had the cops actually called on him. So it wasn't any false reports. He had the cops called on him. I don't have a problem with the factual part of the situation. I have a problem with how the situation is handled. As a police officer, you need to be taught to de-escalate a situation, not escalate a situation. And that's where the mistake was made. That police officer is 100% in the wrong. I'm not going to say the black guy was not wrong. I'm not going to say he should have gotten back in his car. I'm not going to say that he was all right and everything he did was right. I'm not even going to get into that. But as a police officer, as somebody who's supposed to be a man of the law in the land of the free, in the home of the brave, I would expect you to de-escalate a situation. Or at least if the man is not following orders and if he seems to appear hostile, try and uh, subdue the man or the woman. Subdue means if you... Shooting him seven times in the back is not subduing. That's shooting to kill. He could have just shot him in the ankle or maybe tased him or 
or something or took him down um, in a way where he wouldn't be brutally injured like he is now. I, I think it all comes down to police education. Put it, I'll put it to you this way. Police overseas in Norway, Finland, um, France, all those places, they get at least two years of training and are required to have a college degree. Cops in the United States get two weeks of training, two weeks of basic training and a high school diploma. You're going to give a dude with two weeks of basic training and a high school diploma that is 18 years old, a gun, a taser and protection. That, that doesn't sound right to me. That doesn't sound, it, it, it all rounds back to the miseducation of the police force in the United States of America. It's, it's ridiculous. They're so ridiculously miseducated. It's terrible. It, it's it's like, I can, just picture this, I can graduate from high school, get my diploma, be 18 years old, decide to become a cop, go through two weeks of measly basic training, and become a cop. I'm not going to sit here and say becoming a cop is easy. I'm going to sit here and say they need to be educated more. They need to be held to higher standards as, pe as people that are supposed to protect the citizens of the U.S. from crimes and murders and and all of this stuff that goes on around the United States, they're supposed to protect us, yet they're not doing their jobs because they're not properly taught on how to do their jobs. I have, I, I want to, I want to introduce a act. I personally renamed the act um, after me, the Micah Cannon Cops Training Act. That's what I named it. Or you can just call it the Cops Training Act. I believe that act should be enforced. I want to send it to our representative here in Georgia or our senator here in Georgia. Anyhow, it will be enforced. Cops will have two years of training and will be required a college degree. They will not just be the most educated. They will also be most ready to be in the police workforce, a workforce that is one of the most dangerous. They will be able to subdue a person rather than kill a person and ask questions later. They will not resort to their weapons They'll resort to de-escalation. They'll resort to, okay, I understand what's going on in America right now, man, but you have to calm down. You have to chill out. This is nothing racist. This is nothing, this is not a, this is not meant to be deadly. This is not meant to be, oh, this is just a random black man on the street. Let me kill him and get away with it with no consequences, just like the cops of Breonna Taylor. Dude was at the beach the other, the other month. At the beach relaxing while Breonna Taylor is in the grave. That 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 doesn't make sense to me and I feel like any cop that kills a black person should be prosecuted and charged within at least a month. If you if George Floyd's George Floyd's killers have not quite been charged yet. They haven't gone to court, they haven't been charged with their crimes. They're just sitting in jail. They may be getting special treatment, I don't know, but they're just sitting in jail at this point. The fact is that it always takes so long because we can have clear video, clear view, and people ask questions, but I bet you if a black cop kills a white person, that black cop is going to jail instantly. He's getting fired, he's going to jail, he'll probably never get a job again. I also have some information on my cell phone right here to back this up. The United States has more cop killings than these following countries. Just going to name a few. Switzerland, Iceland, Denmark, Japan, Poland, the United Kingdom, Taiwan, Sweden, Portugal, Hong Kong, Germany, Australia, Nepal, Belgium, Finland, Norway, New Zealand, the Netherlands, Indonesia, France, Canada, Luxembourg, Malta, Egypt, Argentina, and Swaziland combined. That's about... What, maybe about 15 to 20 countries I named. The U.S. has more cop killings than all of those countries combined. And these aren't nobody countries. Switzerland, populated country. Tokyo, one of the most populated countries in the world. And uh, yet we have more cop killings than all of those countries that I just named combined. That's ridiculous. That's not an increase in crime that is a lack of education within our local police forces. 
That is police resorting to shoot first, ask questions later, rather than de-escalate situation and subdue a person rather than kill a person. It, I, I, the problem is not that it happens. That That's not just the problem. The problem is that how often it happens. It seems like every single month I'm rinsing and repeating and mourning another black man that got shot by a police officer for a broken taillight. This was a pretty hard video to make, just just in case you couldn't tell. It's kind of emotional. It's just like, I'm a black dude. My dad's black. My mom's black. My sister's black. It's like, it can really happen to anybody. And it, it's really terrible that we have to talk about this in order for it to get attention. But it, it's just what we have to do. Uh, I hope I somehow made your day better. I hope that I gave you information you didn't know. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, like the video. Follow me on Instagram at Real Mikey Cannon. Follow the podcast on Instagram on the Mike Podcast underscore. And that's it for the video for today. I will catch you next episode.